Now we're going to come slamming in with trombones. Bop, 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 bop. Accenting all the syncopated parts of the rhythm. So if you're, if you're in need of some strategy to get through a really long, extended, but very intense action sequence, an ostinato can be your best friend. Um, just that short little repetitive rhythm adds a lot of coherency and cohesion to a long sequence and keeps people engaged and feel like the story is moving forward and the music is helping it. So the idea is you have this ostinato that grows in interest increasingly. You start at one level and you increasingly grow it in rhythmic activity, kind of like we were doing in the last sample. We started with something foundational, brighter, faster, a lot faster. Um, one warning though about progressive ostinato, whenever, whenever we're talking ostinato, it's really easy to get very lazy. Remember that if you're building layer upon layer of rhythm and you start doing the cut and paste thing, we start to lose interest if the rhythm's never really changing or if the music around it doesn't get more interesting. And I see this happening all the time. You know, new composers or younger composers will hit me up and say, hey, check out this action sequence. They did four bars of one rhythm looped it for the next six minutes. Then several bars later, they added another rhythm, looped it on top of that one for six minutes. And it's just these repetitive rhythms that never develop. And not only that, but like the, the uh, musical lines, they get the strings coming in. And all of the strings do is just walk up a scale. So that means there's not really much melodic activity. I get it that you want to progressively show escalation in your musical lines, but th there's a difference between just walking up a scale and actually giving us melodic motifs and um, some sort of big soaring theme at a moment where we really need it. And so the strategy behind progressive ostinato is kind of like that. You, you, you have one ostinato that starts the scene. You develop that rhythm for a while. And then it repeats again, but then you add something like low strings. Bum, 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 bum. And then you wait and wait. When do you change the ostinato? And, and when do you add some new layer? Well, you don't get to decide that. The pitcher gets to decide that. Whenever something new and dramatic interferes in the scene and it causes you to react with alarm or the stakes have just been raised because of something that just changed in this action sequence, that's when the ostinato changes, and that's when maybe you change key, shift your ostinato maybe up a step. Um, just change key for no other reason other than you dramatically escalated up a step. Or if it's the scene is going badly for your hero, maybe it goes down a step. And then if it gets even worse, drop it down a step. You begin to descend and descend. But that rhythm keeps getting more and more interesting, kind of like the passage of time. Every time something important happens, you escalate it a bit. So with an action sequence, they tend not to start great and get more boring. They tend to start and get progressively crazier and more fun. That's just how they're structured. And so every time an interesting thing happens in the scene, escalate it up a notch. Even if you have to wait a while, use little bits of themes or maybe use augmentation and drag your theme out a long time. Give it some time, let the rhythm keep going. When the next major event happens, change key, escalate the ostinato, make it bigger, more interesting, add more musical material. So that's what I mean, progressively build your ostinato. And um, all the way to the end where you just unleash hell all over the scene for the big climactic moment before, probably before something blows up, right? Um, so here we go, we're gonna keep the rhythm we established with that layering drums discussion. So we're gonna start with that six plus three rhythm. So now here's that six plus three rhythm with some low strings, bump, 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 some low short strings, kind of punching along with it. You know, the cellos and basses. Bump, 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 bump. So the scene's picking up. We're still early in this, let's say it's a chase scene. Okay, so that was that same rhythm from before with a little bit of low strings. Now, when we added those brights to it, when something new changed in the scene, it gets a little brighter, a little more exciting. We're gonna add an, the violas up an octave from the cellos and bass. So for, instead of going here, we added another octave of strings to help, just to help fill the space out and add a little more bite to the cue. So here's the same rhythm. Now the notes are changing. It's getting a little more melodic. So it's going somewhere, right? 
Now next, when we hit the takeoff mode, where all the big Tycos come in and start slamming out that main percussive line that drives us to the, through the rest of the scene, I'm doing what I call expanded orchestration. We start with those low lines, make the low line a little more interesting, add some melodic motion to it. Now we're gonna come slamming in with trombones, bop, 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 accenting all the syncopated parts of the rhythm. And we're gonna bring the violins in between, bump, 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 violins, digga, 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 just filling in in between. So we're beginning to increase the amount of rhythmic activity and the range of the orchestration. Mid strings, violins. Okay, so let's say you've been riffing on that rhythm for a while and you need to do something different. Well, let's say some very dramatic turn happened. Maybe something went a little worse for the hero in the scene and we're a little more concerned. So what I would do is keep the same rhythm, but now instead of staying in G, I'm gonna modulate to E minor change the key to a new dark area and introduce a big soaring French horn melody to just make it a little more operatic or apocalyptic. So here we are in a new key with a French horn solo with the same rhythm. The trumpets articulating every other bar. Choir chants. <laughs> so we're trying to step it up a bit. <clears throat> And to make it even more interesting, I'm gonna modulate again from E minor to C minor. So let's say something new and crazy happened. We need to take it up another step and I've even expanded the orchestration farther here and doubled that melody again, except in a new key. Now the choir singing with the horn was just playing. Oh, the modulation back to E minor. I think I even surprised myself with that one. So notice that a sudden key change and a sudden change in the melody can really refresh the middle of a long action sequence. And so finally, we need to take it back home. So we went from here to here, back to E, and now it's time to hold on to that note and go back to G where we started, reintroduce the first bit of material, but now it's fully orchestrated out. that. Now let's do a little experiment. We're going to put it together from wall to wall. It's going to be, it won't be the, nor, the actual length of a full action sequence. That said, you're going to hear the progression of activity from the start. The chase is beginning. The chase gets more interesting. It gets even more interesting. Then sudden key change. And then we're going to go through a series of modulations that are keeping the scene interesting. And then we're going to end back home. So now here's the entire thing put together. So here's our foundation. We're just establishing our rhythm. Now we add the bright. Plus the violas up an octave. More melody going. Now expanded orchestration. Tycho takeoff. Modulation. French horn tune. Something's going wrong. Okay, let's play it up. New key chain. Surprise modulation again. Now we're back in our home key, driving to the end. There's a structure to this the whole time. Epic scene, we're gonna have a riser underneath our rhythm. And we're out. Kaboom, right? So this is what I mean by progressive ostinato, layering drums, um, and just building a structured action sequence, but a few tips for keeping it interesting. So I hope these are helpful tips when you set about creating your own action cues in the future. So uh, gather some awesome sample libraries, a lot of drums, a lot of fun strings and, and brass patches, and just go to town on it.
If you'd like to learn more film scoring tips like these, sign up for free, and I promise you, these lessons will help you on your journey to becoming an accomplished film composer.